A groundbreaking human study concluded that when combined with exercise, sauna bathing demonstrated a substantially supplementary effect on fitness levels over and above just exercise alone. And we care about this because fitness levels, they have been shown to be an independent risk factor for all cause death rates and heart disease risk. So before we go into this new paper to see if we should be having sauna baths after exercise, we need to go through the existing research for context. Exercise and sauna baths, they stress ourselves and signal to them that they need to become more efficient to deal with that stress. And this process is called hormesis. During a sauna session, the heart rate it may increase to about 150 beats per minute, but there's no extra activity of our skeletal muscles, so it stresses our body in a different way compared to exercise. So what evidence do we have so far? Well, the Mayo Clinic did a large review of sauna baths and exercise. They found a lot of human data on Finnish saunas, suggesting a 47% decrease in the risk of developing high blood pressure, decreases in heart attacks, a 62% decreased risk of strokes, and a 66% decrease risk of dementia. And importantly, there were greater benefits seen with the combination of exercise and saunas compared to just exercise alone. Those are epic findings and it's no wonder that people are excited about this research. The trouble is though, the data that we've gone through, it's from observational studies. So just observing the population and seeing what insight we can glean. So it's possible that the people that choose to have sauna baths, they're wealthier or they might be more in tune with the health research and are practicing other good health habits. And while the Mayo Clinic analysis tried to adjust for all of those different confounders, you can't fully control those factors, so you can't fully rely on the conclusions. So we need high quality evidence from randomized clinical studies. So what I mean by this is that we need a study where everyone is exercising, but only half of the people are having sauna baths after that exercise, and the other half isn't. That way we can get a true representation about the combined effect of exercise and sauna baths compared to just exercise. And that's exactly what this July 2022 study did. It's titled, The Effects of Regular Sauna Bathing in Conjunction with Exercise on Cardiovascular Function, a Multi-Arm Randomized Controlled Study. The primary focus was to compare cardiovascular adaptations of regular exercise alone to regular exercise and sauna bathing. And they did this study for eight weeks. They included people between the age of 30 and 64 years of age from Finland. And the inclusion criteria were that the people they needed to have a sedentary lifestyle so they weren't already exercising, and at least one one, traditional heart disease risk factor, such as high cholesterol. The study included a total of 48 people, and the participants exercised three times a week, and each exercise session lasted 60 minutes, and they were performed in the following order, so a 10-minute full body warm-up, 20 minutes of resistance exercise, and 30 minutes of aerobic exercise. Following the aerobic exercise, the participants in the combined exercise and sauna group, they proceeded to have their sauna, which lasted 15 minutes, and the temperature of the sauna started at 65 degrees Celsius and was increased by 5 degrees each fortnight. So what did they find? Well, they found significant differences in the VO2 max or fitness levels, blood pressure and total cholesterol between the exercise only group and the exercise and sauna bathing combined group. So let's have a closer look. The sauna group, they weren't as fit compared to the exercise only group before the study. And after the study, they were just as fit. So here the study has said that there's a significant difference between the two groups. But I think it's just because the sauna group, they came into the study and they weren't as fit. So they had a higher room for improvement. So I don't think we can conclude that sauna bathing, it significantly improves fitness levels compared to just exercise alone. What we can say though, is that there does seem to be a significant difference in blood blood pressure. So the blood pressure between the sauna group and the exercise group, they started roughly the same, but we can see with the sauna group that there was a significant decrease compared to the exercise only group. So that's really pleasing. And it's the same thing with total cholesterol. So the total cholesterol started roughly the same, so roughly 200, but the sauna group had a significant decrease compared to the exercise only group. So overall, the sauna group, they started the study not being as fit compared to the exercise group. So it's quite difficult to interpret the results. What we can say though, is that there were significant differences in the blood pressure decreases and the cholesterol decreases. So with the caveat that this is a small trial over a short time frame, it does seem to validate the idea that combining sauna baths with exercise seem to give even greater benefits compared to just exercise alone. And this video wouldn't be complete without having a look at safety. 
safety. Sauna bathing is a pleasurable recreational activity and has a good safety profile. And overall, the available data seems to suggest that sauna bathing it is safe for patients with stable heart disease. But please everyone, if you've got any concerns about your heart health, such as uncontrolled blood pressure or high cholesterol or chest pains, please make sure to see your doctor first. And the other thing I want to touch on is that we don't yet fully understand why we're seeing these benefits with sauna baths. There is an idea that the benefits stem from a group of proteins called heat shock proteins that are activated when we have saunas. But when the interventions testing program looked at a molecule that can activate the heat shock proteins, there was no benefit seen. So there's still a lot more research that needs to be done to fully understand sauna baths. There's also a question as to which type of sauna is best. So the data that we've gone through here is around Finnish saunas. But what about infrared saunas? And can you get the same benefits just by having a hot shower? These are interesting questions and we don't have the research yet to give definitive answers. As of right now though, we do have good evidence that having a sauna bath after exercise seems to give us greater benefits compared to just exercise alone. A massive thank you to the patrons and channel members and make sure to check out the next video here where I explain why I take a supplement called niacin. Thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin clinical study. They are a health research organization and to benefit from their ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.